Hello. On this fine morning, I'll be discussing the best and worst set pieces in Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together. Set pieces are a group of in-game entities that can randomly spawn in the world, some rarer than others. Set pieces can either be really useless or a blessing from the heavens, depending on what items they contain. In this video, I'll use a large number of images from the wiki, as finding a lot of these set pieces is a rare occurrence and would take a long time to find naturally. The vast majority of set pieces take the form of other dead adventurers' skeletons, with items lying around them. These set pieces are nicknamed boons, as they are that, a supplementary boon to assist you on your surviving endeavours. Boons can contain a vast array of set items, ranging from some refined items, such as rope, cut stone and boards, to items that are rarer and can normally only be obtained by late or mid-game means, such as walking canes, dark swords or other late-game weapons. Finding boons can benefit the player greatly, even if they only contain basic items like grass and logs. The resources that spawn from the skeleton set pieces can be taken freely at no cost to you, along with the bone shards obtained from hammering the skeleton. However, some set pieces will come at somewhat of a cost. Trap set pieces can severely harm the survivability of a new player who is unaware of them. Trap set pieces can do a variety of things to hinder the activator. Things such as exploding, spoiling your food, awakening hounds, changing the season, etc, etc. However, most of these set pieces include a way to disarm or avoid the negative effect from affecting you. The first trap set piece consists of a few pieces of rot lying on the ground, along with a chest or backpack containing various goodies. However, when a chest or backpack is opened, all food in your inventory will immediately spoil. This can be avoided by dropping all your food onto the ground and then opening the chest and backpacks. This trap can only activate once, so it's safe to pick up all your food and reopen the chest or backpack after disarming it. Inside the chest or backpack, items such as basic supplies like rope, blueprints, hats or more rot can be found inside. The second trap set piece consists of a fire or ice staff, encircled by red or blue hounds respectively. Picking up the staff will awaken the hounds, make it start to rain, and cause you to lose a decent amount of sanity. This can be avoided by kiting the hounds one by one, which will not cause the others to awaken, making retrieving the staff far easier than before. Picking up the staff after doing this will still cause you to lose sanity and make it begin to rain. The next trap set piece is a square of wooden walls, with bones, grass and beef low hair lying inside. In the entrance a chest can be found. The hair, wooden walls, grass and bones can be hammered or retrieved safely. However, when opened, the chest will explode and in turn, set everything nearby on fire. Hammering the chest will also activate this effect. However, you can use the water balloon on the chest after it has exploded to stop the fire spreading. The chest will still explode, but putting out the fire allows you to retrieve its contents without risk. The chest will contain one fire staff and some gunpowder and logs. Next up is the spider warrior trap. This set piece consists of a few planted grass tufts and saplings, which you can take freely. You can also hammer the hay walls to receive some grass additionally. On a single tile of carpeted turf, a spider warrior sleeps, surrounded by numerous bones and a pig head. Upon attacking the spider, three additional spider warriors will appear around the player and start attacking them. While misleading, this set piece can provide you with some free grass, grass tufts and saplings. This next trap set piece is more of an easter egg than an actual danger, but it could still potentially harm unsuspecting players. It takes the shape of a large graveyard with numerous marble pillars around the edges. Inspecting the graves will reveal the names of the clay development team. Upon digging up all of the graves, a hostile ghost will spawn from each grave. The sheer number of ghosts can prove difficult to kill, as they will all perform AoE attacks. This can be avoided by simply not digging up the final grave. The graves will still drop normal grave loot when they are first dug up, including a 10% chance for a ghost to appear. This set piece can be extremely beneficial due to the amount of rare magical items you will get from digging up the large number of graves. The final trap set piece worth discussing is the winter and summer trap set piece. Upon opening the chest found, they will begin the season of winter or summer if you're playing Reign of Giants and the trap was found in a desert. The chest will contain a, num a number of items to assist you with surviving the respective season started. Hammering the chest also triggers the effect. The icebox and thermal measurer can safely be opened and destroyed with no risk. This set piece was removed and don't sub together, 
mostly because people would use it as an easy form of griefing, by randomly opening the chest in someone else's world. If you open the chest on the first day of winter, or summer, the trap will have no negative effect and will provide you with the free items inside. Opening it after winter or summer has started will extend the season depending on how late you opened it. These set pieces are few and far between, however, finding one can be extremely beneficial to your survival if you are lucky enough to stumble upon one. This set piece is rare, however you can use it late game to farm or contain certain bosses and entities in the game. It consists of a large square of basalt and insanity obelisks, which will lower when you're insane. You can place a telelocator focus inside to teleport something into it. Basalt, along with obelisks, is indestructible, meaning you can house anything in there as a sort of pet. However, being insane will lower the obelisks and let whatever is inside out. This set piece isn't really beneficial to survival, however, mega bases might find it interesting to use as a cage for the seasonal giants or some otherwise hard to contain enemy. This set piece, nicknamed Tall Fort, consists of a ring of rocks and a large number of tall bird nests sitting around. This area is dangerous to be around without armor, as the insane amount of tall birds will kill you pretty quickly. However, this set piece can be utilized to great benefit. Kiting out the tall birds one by one will enable you to steal their eggs and combine them with the meat dropped by the tall birds to make bacon and eggs, or other crockpot meals if you prefer. You can also mine the rocks to amass a mountain of rocks for your everyday survival needs. You can burn the tall bird nests, however this is not recommended as you can easily abuse this set piece to farm meat and eggs infinitely. This can be done with pigs, bunny men, a mix of both, or even better, if you are playing this wicker bottom, her tentacle book can be used to farm the tall birds even more efficiently. There is also a variant of this set piece which includes hound mounds instead of tall bird nests. This can be farmed in similar ways to obtain monster meat, rocks, hound teeth, and occasionally gems. Cave camps can be found on the ground. They often contain an array of usable structures and items, such as science machines, farms, ice boxes, tents, and ponds. The set piece can sometimes contain drying racks, fire pits, and crockpots. The chest will contain some caves related loot, such as slurtle slime, rocks, and occasionally gems. The ice box will contain some food, but it is likely that this will have spoiled by the time you find it. This structure can be a helpful benefit to players exploring the caves, as it contains many useful items and structures that can either be hammered or used as they are. Another variant of this set piece is found in the ruins and contains similar loot, but has dangling depth dweller webs surrounding it, making looting it difficult. And finally, the best set piece you can find. While technically a trap, this set piece is so much more of a blessing than a curse. As most characters, the sheer amount of tentacles can be used to kill almost anything, from seasonal giants to gigantic waves of hounds. It also allows access to a large number of reeds, which, in turn, can be used to make large numbers of honey poultices and the like. However, this set piece nowhere near reaches its full potential without playing the second coming of set, I mean Wickerbottom. Wickerbottom can use her book, Applied Horticulture, to mass farm the reeds that come with this set piece. With the reeds, she can make more copies of Applied Horticulture, which, in turn, gives her infinite access to all her books, aside from the other ingredients. With this power, you can amass an infinity of everything, basically. From bird feathers, darts, food, tentacles, weapons, pretty much anything you need to survive. However, like most, this set piece is rare, and it's basically up to good old RNGs to decide your fate. However, with the use of mods, you can guarantee a spawn of this set piece. Some would consider this cheating due to its immense power as wicker, but ultimately, modding just speeds up the process of constantly generating new worlds in order to find the set piece. Anyway, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. About the lack of videos recently, well, the only reason for that is pure laziness, so I apologize. I also just got a Twitter, which I know no one cares about, so why I even bothered saying that is beyond me. Anyway, see ya, have a good one.